Let's take a few minutes to talk about sign languages. I want to transmit to you a few ideas about sign languages, which are, after all, languages that we could process using NLP. And the first one is that sign languages are full languages. They can express any idea, just like spoken languages like English, like Spanish, you can say anything in them. Um, sign languages have their own grammars, but those grammars are fully generative, just like the ones that we saw in week two for spoken languages. They can always generate new sentences and express new ideas, such as hang in there. This is an example of American Sign Language, also called ASL. Not only are they fully generative and can they generate any, and can ex they express any idea, but there's also a lot of them, hundreds of them. As you can see in this map, there's many sign language families, just as there are spoken language families. For example, here in Britain, we have um, a British sign language, which is related to the sign languages in Australia and New Zealand. We also have the French sign language, which is related to sign languages spoken in Spain and in some parts of Latin America. There are many sign languages and they're all different from one another, just as spoken languages are. For example, this is the word tree in American sign language, Danish sign language, and Chinese sign language. As you can see, they're, they're as different as English, Danish, and Chinese are from each other. Something very important is that sign languages are not English. There is uh, finger spelling. You might have seen this where there, is, there are lists of uh, how to convert a consonant or a vowel from English, from written English, into an ASL sign. However, most ASL signs are not, sim are not a conversion of English into uh, you know, expressions with your fingers. Most of them are words of uh, ASL. And ASL has its, has its own grammar rules that are very different from English. This is just one example. For example, in English, uh, verbs use affixes to express their tense. For example, you have walked, walked, danced, danced. In ASL, you also use a type of conjugation, but this conjugation is spatial. Signs that are related to the past happen near to the torso and tilting backwards. Signs that have to do with the future happen away from the torso and tilting forward, as you can see in the two examples here. So both languages use um, morphemes attached to roots to express time, but they use them very differently. So ASL is not English, um, and it's just a full language on its own. The main idea that I want to, to tell you about is that sign language is not just about hands. Sure, many signs are made with your hands. However, there's a lot of other articulators involved. As, as I just told you, the position of your torso, for example, changes the tense of a word. Uh, your eyebrows in ASL, for example, can indicate that you're asking a yes or no question or a who, what question. Uh, in these examples of British Sign Language, uh, a closed mouth versus an open mouth can indicate the difference between battery and uncle, which are otherwise uh, the same motions. For example, flat lips versus pursed lips are the only difference in the signs Brighton and Expensive. So things like the position of your torso, your eyebrows, your lips, those are also parts of words and sign languages. And so it's not just using your hands. And because of that, whenever someone tells you that they develop gloves and can translate ASL into English, they're probably selling you snake oil. Uh, sign languages, again, are not just about your hands. They have to do with torso, face, and the interaction between all these. It's not just about the hands and the fingers. Finally, sign languages could be written. 
There are several systems to write sign languages. This is um, an example of what the Goldilocks story would look like. But um, sign languages are not written very frequently. Usually when um, people speak them, it's either signing or, for example, through videos. In summary, sign languages are full languages with their own grammars that are uh, transmitted with motions of hands, of, face, of your face, and torso. Same as spoken languages use motions of your lungs and your vocal cords and your mouth to transmit the ideas, sign languages use motions of hands, of faces, and torsos to transmit the ideas. They're different in that they have their own grammars. They're human languages in that they have the same properties as spoken language. For example, they're generative and can generate new sentences all the time. There's many of them. And um, in our next video, we're going to look at how we could use sign languages with natural language processing.